Hi everyone, Rioling by Randy here. I am ready to show you another menu by Peter Goski from his great books. This is his original pain-free book. This is the newer version. So we're gonna go through the neck menu today that is for cervical herniations and for the cervical spines. So this is all for um, a lot about the forward head. And so I'm excited to go over this with you. So many people are having um, neck and upper back pain. Um, sometimes when you have a herniation, you might have some numbness and tingling or radiating down your arm to different points. It could be in all fingers. It could be in just certain fingers. Um, so this is a great menu to try and do to resolve the symptoms. But as always, um, any exercise that increases symptoms or causes pain, do not do it or stop in the middle. Um, otherwise, these Routines are meant to be done in sequence, um, the way they were created. So that's what we're gonna go through today. Okay, first up is standing at a wall with a block. So you stand with your back against the wall, heels touching the wall, if that works for you. Some people will have their feet a little um, away from the wall, the heels. You're going to put a block or a small pillow between your knees, so you're just gently putting pressure on the block. You want your back and your low back and your mid back touching the wall. We are not forcing our head on the wall. If it touches, great, but if not, that's okay. Um, we'll go over that a little bit more. Um, basically with our legs, we want to have our thighs tight and knees straight. Now, if you hyperextend, you might need to unlock your knees just a little bit, but for everyone else, fully extend your legs or fully straighten your legs and tighten your thighs. So I'm just gonna relax my shoulders down by my side. This is going to be six to eight minutes. And we're gonna talk about why so long, but it is very beneficial to do at least the six minutes, um, even maybe more beneficial to go to the eight minutes. Um, my feet are pointed straight ahead and they are parallel. So. If your feet are turned out a little bit, that's still like a pigeon toad. So we want parallel by the outsides of the feet. And you might even feel a little bit of a, a knee in or um, pigeon toed sensation with your legs. Um, so now in terms of the head position, I have people, so many people in today's world have very forward heads. So they'll get to the wall and their head's here, and if they were to try and put their head in the wall, they'd be tipping. That's not going to help release anything. So that's where we do whatever's natural with the head. Now, for me, someone who does practice a lot of this and aligns regularly, it really depends on what did I do the day before, how much computer time, how much um, work I did sitting, um, how easily my head will touch the wall. But for me, with some regular alignment, my head can easily touch the wall. Now, the reason why are we doing this for the neck um, is we, when we use the wall as a, a platform for this, we're positioning our feet straight, which is making it so that the muscles starting at the bottom of the feet and the bottom and the back of the calves are just positioned evenly. So that means any kind of kind of pull and rotation that's happening in our calves and our lower leg will help even out by just stretching. You'll feel some stretching sensation in the back of your legs. So we are slowly, and that's why we need so many minutes when doing this, is we're allowing the body to react all the way from the bottom of our feet and really the calves. And then at some point that will pull on what's happening with the thigh bone position, our femur bone. Um, all of this is going to react upwards. How is it getting to the neck? The key is, is that the position of the um, femur bone affects what the pelvis is doing. The pelvis is starting to affect what the lower spine is doing, the sacrum, into the low back. And therefore, a natural curve will get up into the neck. Um, so our body will naturally follow the normal gentle S curve that goes for the spine, um, where your low back goes one way and your neck is the same direction and your thoracic back is the opposite direction. So that's the reason for this. 
Um, there are some added things that can be done in this position that are further part of some of the Agassiz exercises that can be added in, but this alone still is doing some great work. You'll feel just having to hold your thighs um, tight and just gently holding the pillow, all of that you'll feel some work and it's just a slow reaction up through the body. We are seeing so much with forward heads today. Um, it's really putting a lot of stress on the cervical spine. You can have different symptoms. Um, this is not the direct um, headache menu in Peter Goscue's book. However, it very well may help with um, headaches and um, head pressure, um, back of the neck pain, radiating down the arm pain, um, all the things that go on with neck symptoms. So as I've even been here for a couple minutes and going over with you, I do feel like my head is kind of settling in a little better. But again, if you're starting off and your head's way out here, do not get discouraged if in the first time your head isn't easily touching the wall. That's going to take time for your body to adapt and change. One of the other keys here is relaxing your abdominals. I think because I'm tightening, I'm talking, uh, I might not have been as focused on that, but relaxing the abdom abdominals um, that's going to help promote sort of the natural spinal curves. And that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to stack and load all the joints, the shoulders, the hips, the knees, the ankles, the low joints. And then the spine is sitting here in the middle. And as everything is sitting better, the spine can fall into place better because the muscles around the spine are all reacting to this position. So again, this will be six to eight minutes. Relaxing the abdominals, feet are straight, shoulders are relaxed down, not forcing the head on the wall. Okay, next up is short foot. It is a great exercise. It's a little surprising that the short foot, foot exercise is in the neck menu. But believe it or not, we do really have to start down at our feet, the whole body is connected. It's going to cause a chain reaction up the body and into the spine. So we'll go over that as we go through the exercise. Um, an interesting thing with this exercise is in the picture, it doesn't show the full body in the book. So what you're missing is the knee bending. So I want you to really take note of that if you're trying to reproduce this exercise from one of the books. Um, I like to use a wall, a chair, or a counter to kind of have as balance next, next to me so that I don't need to worry about losing my balance. So when you put your feet, you're going to put them parallel. So that's like two cars in two different car lanes. However, this heel and um, this set of toes will be in line with each other. So that's the positioning of the feet. So I'm gonna do it this way. And you're gonna be watching this arch here. But once I'm in this position, I can hold on to the wall if I need to, I'm going to bend my knees kind of sitting into this, which creates a nice little arch in our low back naturally. I'm looking forward and then I'm putting my weight down on both feet. Now the work is happening in the front foot. So I'm just relaxing my shoulders down. I'm going to lift up my toes. I'm going to try and spread them. And then I press down, trying not to curl them. So as I lift, spread, and when I press down, you might see in my foot, if you look closely, that my arch will lift a little bit. Now, if you have really um, flat feet, you may um, see that difference more than you may on mine. I actually have done now a fair amount of footwork, so I feel like my arches are um, coming back a little bit from being in such supported shoes. This is going to be three sets of 10 on each side. So I'm almost at about 10. So what I love about this is you want to switch sides back and forth because that's how you um, stimulate the body to get more even rather than fatiguing all on one side and then switching sides. So I'm repositioning my feet nice and parallel and, and the feet are nice and pointed straight. Again, you may have a pigeon toed feeling on this. Um, be mindful of any little turn out of the front of the foot and correct that. Again, they're parallel, they're in separate paths, and then it's the 
heel and the toes that are more aligned. I bend my knees and let everything else kind of react. Weight is on both feet, wall if I need it. Front foot's doing the work, only the front foot. So I lift, I spread, I press. Lift my toes, spread and press. We are not lifting the balls of the foot. We don't wanna do that. We wanna just do it through the toes. Depends on you how easily will your toes move, but this is a sort of work in progress depending on where you at in your alignment uh, journey. Now, why does this help the neck? Um, because as you can see, we're repositioning the low back, we're getting um, some work in our hips. All of this is creating a natural spinal curve, which then can react all the way up to the neck. So we're doing the three sets of 10. So I'm on to my second set, getting parallel, bending my knees, dropping my arms, looking forward, lifting my toes, making sure my feet are nice and straight, lift, toes spread, and press down. And Again, we're doing sets of 10. This could be sets of 15 or 20 as you um, get further along with this exercise. But you will feel a lot of you working, not just your feet when you do this exercise. Okay. Switching back to the other side, bending my knees. Feet are nice and parallel, being mindful of that. Looking forward, dropping the shoulders, lifting the toes, spreading the feet, I mean, sorry, spreading the toes and then press down. Lift, spread, and press down. Again, trying not to curl the toes. Kind of just let the re abdominals relax here. You will feel work in different areas. That is second full set. We're gonna do one more set of 10 on each side. Again, I flipped around, I set my feet parallel, making sure they're straight, bend my knees, look forward, and I will lift my toes, not lifting the ball of my feet, spread them and press. And again, if you are finding this hard with your feet, just be patient, they will um, start working more. Many people might have great toe mobility, um, just all depends on what type of, how much barefoot walking you've done in your life out playing outside, or how much heels or sneakers you wear for work. All of that's gonna play a role into how easily your toes can move and what your arch is like. I'm on the last one. I parallel my feet, feet are nice and straight, bend my knees, looking forward, relax my arms down, and I can hold on for balance as needed. Lift my toes, spread, press down. Lift, spread, press down. Okay. Got a few more. Finishing up this last set of 10. This is a total of three sets of 10. And again, the flipping back and forth is very valuable when doing this exercise. Again, this one's called short foot. Next up is static extension. So we need a block or a chair or an ottoman, something like that that's nice and sturdy that you can climb up on. Now, I will give you an alternative to this. Um, in case you're not comfortable um, putting your legs up on something like this. So let's go ahead and get into the position. So I'm going to climb up onto the block. And actually I'm gonna make sure it's nice and straight first. Okay, so I'm on the block. I'm gonna put my hands down. So I get into a position where my hips are directly over my knees and my shoulders are over my wrists. Again, I'm doing the best I can for my body awareness to see where I'm at. Then we move the hands a little bit forward. That in, 
might be about five to six inches, but it depends on your body. And then I'm shifting my weight forward. And now my shoulders are back over my wrists and I am, have a nice arch in my low back. And then I'm gonna draw my shoulder blades together and I'm dropping my head. Now, many people who haven't done a lot of alignment are gonna have a tough time with this shoulder blade aspect um, just because they may not glide as well. So this is a place to just try and be patient and give yourself a chance to let that happen. And um, part of the reason why we're letting the hang, the head hang, is this creates some cervical traction, um, which is something that's done in the physical therapy world, the chiropractic world, and it all just kind of lets the vertebrae stretch out a little bit and take some pressure off the discs. So this can be very um, relieving to pressure that you have on the spine. Now, in addition, because again, most of these exercises are really whole body exercises, we are trying to get rid of this. We're holding this for one to two minutes. Um, we're trying to allow for any imbalance right to left to sort of even out in our upper back, in our low back muscles, um, but in addition, sort of the natural curves coming back, starting with our low back and our pelvis, um, because again, it all sort of stacks up on top of each other and sort of responds. Um, it's really, the spine is uh, multiple vertebrae connected together, but it all reacts um, from one end to the other. So holding this about one to two minutes, and then coming down. And I always recommend being slow to get up after that, um, if you were to get up um, and stand up because you've had your head hanging down and you wanna make sure you don't get a um, drop in blood pressure by getting up too quickly. So now I'm gonna give you the alternative to this. If you're just not comfortable with that position, there is the same exercise that we call static extension position where you start in the hands and knees, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, and you can take your hand a little bit forward, again about five to six inches forward, shift, bring your shoulder back over your wrist, drop your shoulder blades, let the arch happen, and here we are, same exercise um, in a less demanding position, and again, you would hold this for one to two minutes. Now, um, again, when Peter Goscu created these venues, everything was sort of created for a reason. So if you can do the full exercise up on, on a block or a chair, that's gonna create a little bit more demand on your spine and on the muscles, so that's great. But super important along the way to sort of meet your body where it is at. Again, when I work with people one-on-one -on -one and we're um, you know, using these exercises, we're really um, paying attention to what their particular posture is doing and where their body is at and where their symptoms are at so that they can um, meet the needs. So if you're doing this on your own, you've got to really listen to your body so you don't aggravate symptoms. Next up is hero's pose. Um, it is actually a position I like sitting in, so it's um, fairly easy for me. However, for many people, this might be a difficult position. So I'm going to explain to you with some different variations to help out. But the idea of the exercise is to have your feet pointed down flat and sitting on your heels and you would have your knees together and your heels together and you can rest your arms, um, your palms up on the legs and you just sort of let the shoulders relax back and down. Don't need to force it. We're creating a natural arch here. Whenever we create arches, we're trying to use our hips a little bit, the front of the hips to create that rather than really using your erectors, your back muscles and causing tension, just roll from the pelvis and then relax the abdominals and I'd be looking forward. Now, if you are someone who is all the way up here when you get into this position, then you've got options. Blankets, pillows, you can modify different ways. Um, if you're really struggling and that hurts to even sit, you can separate your feet a little bit and use something to sit on. Um, this can help you work through the position because um, with time, it will get better. And 
The other thing is sometimes people really struggle to put their feet flat. So that might be something else that you might need to modify with your feet. Now, how is this position helping your neck? Now, when, again, we've been talking about how the whole body is connected, um, the position of our leg bones and our lower leg bones all matter. So this is actually making sure we have the proper amount of um, rotation and, and flexibility in our joints all the way down below. That way, when we're standing up, everything can load and move more properly. And again, we're back to that same thing. We're creating a natural curve here. This is all creating natural spinal position to allow your head to sit on top rather than um, if you were sitting like this, you kind of feed into the more forward head position. So all of this is gonna help reload the joints so that your head is sitting in a better position and therefore symptoms can reduce and you can prevent breakdown of joints, which is so important. Okay, sitting knee pillow squeezes. It is one of the most common exercises that you will see used in Pedagoscu's routines um, because it really works for so many things. So let's go over it. So you're sitting on a chair or you could be sitting on one of the traditional um, Eglascu blocks. You're trying to be about 90 degrees. It is gonna depend on your height, how that will um, work out may need to, uh, a very tall person could even put something on a regular chair to sort of raise them up to a better position. You're going to parallel your feet by the outsides again. We don't want this little turnout. We want nice and straight. We're gonna put our knees over the ankles. So looking like this. And then when it comes to the pelvis, so you're not sitting, if you were sitting in a regular chair, you're not using the back at all. So you're gonna relax your pelvis back and then the setting is to take the front of your hips and roll your pelvis forward. Rather than using sort of your back muscles, your rectum muscles to create that natural arch. So it's coming right here from the pelvis and then you sort of let everything else sit on top. Now I'm going to grab my um, traditional Egoski buff. This can be a pillow like this, a little couch pillow. This one, you might wanna bend it in half. You do want to still have your feet separated some. You want something that fits in well enough. I am going to reset my pelvis, checking my feet, knees over the ankles, just relaxing my arms, and now I'm going to squeeze and release. Um, this menu calls for three sets of 10 of these, so every 10, I'm going to reset my pelvis. That's part of the exercise, part of the benefit, again, about creating the spine. Um, from pelvis all the way through thoracic through to the cervical. Um, now, why does this matter? We are retraining our inner thighs, our adductor muscles, number one, and it helps get rid of imbalances or disparities commonly occurring in our pelvis. So if you have a neck pain that is one-sided or going down one arm, Many times there is a disparity that's in your shoulder blades or could be coming from your pelvis. So this helps to get rid of any balance. Okay, so let's say that was 10 right there. I'm going to relax for a second, reset my pelvis using my hips to roll forward, stacking up, and then I'm gonna go on with another 10. So it is really interesting how retraining the adductors and getting imbalances out of our um, pelvis can help symptoms throughout our body. Um, so when you do this, you can notice with your inner thighs, you notice one inner thigh working faster or harder than the other one, and we're trying to get them working together, okay? The more they are sort of in a balanced position, they are going to allow your body to load more evenly, and again, then your neck may sit on top better and you can get relief. And again, we're creating more balance on our low joints throughout the body. Okay, so that was about another 10. I'm going to let my pelvis go, reset it, rolling with my hips, check my feet, stack everything up, relax my shoulders down, relax my belly, and now we're doing 10 more. about five left 
make sure you're breathing, don't hold your breath. With any of these exercises, that's always important. Okay, three sets of 10, moving on. Next up is air bench. And on this exercise, you need to be a little bit more mindful of safety and not sliding. It's like a wall sit. Um, so you have two options. You can be on a yoga mat with bare feet. Actually, maybe a third option is just if there's carpet and bare feet, sometimes with nice carpet, you won't slide on. And the other option is to um, put your sneakers on. This is a nice grippy pair of shoes that I don't even need socks for. So we're gonna use these because I think it will give me my best traction. But many times I will still do it on a yoga mat with bare feet. Um, this exercise is done according to the book between one to three minutes. Um, three minutes is super challenging. We'll go over modifications. I'm gonna set a timer for two minutes while I'm explaining, see how that goes. Okay, so I lean my back against the wall. You're gonna walk your feet out and your walk, bringing your body down. And where you wanna be is about 90 degrees here, but your feet are out a little bit further than your knees. You don't want your knees over your feet. So you don't want to be like that, okay? So once my feet are nice and parallel again, I'm about a fist width apart with my knees. Um, you could be maybe a little wider. I am pressing my low back into the wall. I am not forcing my head on the wall. It is most likely not naturally gonna go on the wall. This is more about taking the work and putting the work into your legs and sort of out of your back. It relaxes your back, which all again, connection up to the cervical spine. So I am putting my weight through my heels when possible. I'm really pushing into the wall and I'm really driving my back into the wall. Let my arms relax. They could be on my legs. They could hang down. Um, and with this exercise, again, a minute is a great goal. Um, aiming towards two minutes, long run. Um, three minutes, great. But you can do 15 seconds or 20 seconds um, and it still is beneficial. You can do four times 15 seconds and that'll give you a minute. Um, you could do one or two times. This is one that just don't skip it um, unless of, of course there's pain, then you need to skip it. If you have knee pain, you can raise yourself up and not go down as far. That's also another modification for any symptom. Um, again, try and do the exercise, but if something hurts, then of course you need to skip it until you are ready for it. Um, we have completed the menu for necks for cervical herniation or the cervical spine from the book, Pain-Free by Peter Guskew. Again, I am Randy with um, Realign by Randy, and that's Randy with two E's. I am certified by the Agoscu Institute, and I'm happy to work with people who are having troubles if some of these generalized menus are not resolving your symptoms. Um, there's a lot of different options and exercises and way to sequence things to help um, alleviate symptoms. So you can message me through Instagram or my website or Facebook. Um, all of it is realigned by Randy. Uh, I'm happy to help. Um, I do Zoom appointments as well as in person in South Florida. Have a great day.